y'all, it's Laura, and today we're talking scrapbooking retreats and crops. I wanna talk a little bit about what I pack for retreats and crops and why, and uh, show you my super simple tips for keeping your packing small, to keep you from overpacking and bringing all of your things to these retreats and crops, because I find having too many options makes me freeze, and I just can't create the way I want to. So we're gonna go through the two bags that I brought with me to the recent Erica Rose creative weekend, which was in Rockford, Illinois. And Erica Rose is a YouTuber here. I will link her down below. I had a great time, met some fantastic people, a few of my friends here from YouTube, and uh, I'm definitely hoping to go again. So let's jump over to the desk and see what I packed in those two bags. And I'll give you a look at the 10 layouts that I made while I was at the retreat. Let's go check it out. Okay, so before I start taking them apart to show you everything that's in them, just really quickly, this is the Ikea Fajala that I use to hold my kits. I have filled it with the smaller tools and sprays and Nuvo, things like that. And then this bag is from 31, I believe, and it's holding four kits, my embellishment trays, and my trimmer, as well as a couple of templates here in the front. So I'm gonna take apart each of them up here on the desk, but I wanted to give you a quick overview of what I showed up at the door with, to scrap with. This was it, this is all that I brought. I did not have anything else. <laughs> I know this doesn't seem like very much for a three-day crop, but I promise you it did the job. So here's a quick look of how I had everything set up. I had the Vijala with my kit in it on one side, finished layouts on the other, and a small space in the center to work. As you can see, my condiment tray worked overtime. Off to the side, I had my second bag up on a chair so I could reach it easily. And these were my lovely table mates, Kathy on the left and Chris on the right, and we had a brilliant time. So a couple of quick notes I should mention. This was a crop that I drove to. I drove eight hours up there to the crop. And so having this open storage option was something that I could do. Obviously, if you're flying to a retreat or something that's further away, then uh, you'd have to have some sort of closed storage or be able to fit this in your suitcase. But for what I was doing, this worked really well. So this is, of course, the Ikea Fajala I was showing you. This is what I use to hold my kits when I'm working on them. And I just stuck in a lot of smaller tools and just basic necessities in here. So what are those basic necessities for me? Uh, one thing was a couple of small bowls. I ended up using this one mostly for trash and then dumping it in the larger trash cans as needed. But this was very helpful for sequins, for uh, any kind of little bits and pieces like this that I wanted to dump out and be able to sift through. Having a tiny bowl was very, very helpful for that. Having a, an additional bowl for any sort of, whether you're dumping out an ephemera pack, something like that, it's much easier for me to dump it into a bowl rather than on the table. Now, what else have I got? I of course have my lovely T-square ruler, and this is what I use for journaling and borders. So I had to bring that, of course. I brought some punches. I was very selective on the punches I decided to bring. I brought a large, medium, and small in three different shapes, and that's it. Not even that much, actually. I think I brought in two shapes and then one circle punch. Let me double check. But yes, here's my large heart and star. And my one inch circle punch, okay? Then the smaller punches are in the other bag. I ended up moving them while cropping. I also brought this guy. So I knew I needed a hole punch. I knew I had some tags I wanted to fussy cut out and use. So I brought my multi-tool hole punch, which I'm a little addicted to. It's very expensive. It is completely unnecessary. Absolutely a luxury to have. You don't need this, okay? Any hole punch will do. But because I do a lot of creating my own tags, it's helpful to be able to pick different sized holes. I usually use these top three more than any others. And I find it really useful to have just one tool that does all the things. Next up, I had my adhesives. So I brought, actually, this is the second roll. I brought two half inch rolls. and This one's almost gone, uh, about half gone. I used a lot of tape. And so I brought my three sizes of tape, my half inch, quarter inch, and one eighth inch. I just get this on Amazon. It's super cheap, it's nothing special. I did bring an extra roll of half inch because I use that most often. I also brought two, I didn't end up needing two, but this one is pretty near empty. So I was glad I had the second one just in case. 
This is my tonic glue pen. This is the only wet adhesive that I use probably 99% of the time. It's the only one I reach for. So I did have my adhesives. Of course, I brought my two pairs of scissors that I have shown you guys before. These are my tried and true absolute go-to tools. I use them for everything. This is just American Crafts uh, with rose gold handled scissors. I love them. They're fantastic. And then the Tim Holtz, I think they're called mini snips. Very, very good for fussy cutting. Absolutely love these. So these are the two I brought with me. And then I did bring stamp block and archival ink, but I didn't end up using it. I brought it because one of my kits does have a stamp in it and I was hoping I would use it, but I didn't because we're, we're dealing with me here. <laughs> and of course a pencil and a journaling pen. So just very basic necessities here, guys. Like there's nothing special happening. I did bring my little scattering pieces. So these are little punched heart stars. And uh, these are punched hearts and stars from glitter paper and gold foiled paper. And I just use them as scattering bits around my clusters. I also have these, which I fussy cut from some washi tape and put in this little container. So I brought those, I figured those would be quick and easy to scatter around. I did end up using them. I brought some twine. So just brought two colors, uh, probably the most neutral that I had in my stash. So black and white and kind of this kind of cream and, and gold. So the most neutral I had, I went ahead and brought these two. I did use them. I had some 3D uh, dots, zots or whatever they're called. So they're very, I don't know if you can tell, but they stick up quite a bit. And so I used those a few times. I did bring some stitching stuff, but I didn't end up using it. Uh, I just wanted to have the option and it's very small. So I just tucked it in there and said, I'll, I'll see if I can make that work. I didn't get to it. I've got my very last bottle of Heidi Swap Color Shine that is, is very, very near empty. I grabbed three colors of Nouveau Drops, my most go-to colors in the Crystal Drops, black, white, and gold. I highly suggest if you want to try Nouveau Drops, stick with the basics. Stick with the colors you're gonna use most often. For me, it's gold and black, honestly. White occasionally, but more gold and black than any other color. So that was it for this container of what I packed. So just very basic tools, guys. Nothing crazy, nothing out there. Very basic stuff. Let me move on to the bag. Okay, so here's the 31 bag. We're gonna have to do this one kind of laying down because it's rather tall on my desk. But here in the front pocket, I've just got some baby wipes just in case. I ended up using them actually, which I was surprised by. And that was only because I ended up getting Nuvo drops on my fingers somehow. But I brought them for the stamps. And then here are the rest of my punches. So like I said, I brought three sizes for two shapes. So I had the two large heart and star punches and then two medium heart and star punches and the two small heart and star punches. And along with my one inch circle punch, that was it. That was enough, that was plenty. So if you are a brand new scrapper, that is what I would recommend you buying if you want to get into punches, only if you wanna get into punches. I would start with a heart and a star in three different sizes and a circle punch in a one inch. Brilliant, so helpful, exactly what I use all of the time. Now, as far as tools in the bag, I have included my circle templates. So these are created from bowls in my house and using the chipboard that comes with kits and with paper orders. I just use that and some circles and some bowls rather to create these circles in a variety of sizes. I have the sizes written on the center. I did use these on a layout. <laughs> I also brought some extra photos. So I had some that were already marked up. These were more recent photos, just in case I got to them. I didn't end up needing them. I brought one piece of foam. Didn't end up using it, but it was good to have just in case. And then I brought my large hexagon, which is hard to see. This is a quilting template that I got from a cherry on top and I didn't end up using it, but I did consider it. So I thought I'd bring it. And that's it for those tools. The back here has my big tools. Of course, my paper trimmer, which I use the dress my craft one. So that guy had to come, of course. And then my embellishment tray. So this is something I got from Amazon. It's actually a condiment tray. 
it's just plastic. It's super, super inexpensive. I think you can get them in like a three pack. So I have one set up for the three kits I always have on the go and that uh, keeps me from getting bored, but also keeps me organized. And I put like a pack of ephemera, I put wood veneer, I put uh, small stickers, anything little I put in these containers so I don't lose them in my kit and I remember to use them. So this guy came along for the ride as well. Now as for actual paper supplies, I brought one collection, which I was just fussy cutting and that's Paige Evans Bungalow Lane. I was just fussy cutting that one. I didn't scrap with it. I brought white cardstock. My favorite is Basil's uh, Coconut Swirl. So that's why I brought some white cardstock. I brought some eight and a half by 11 white cardstock that I'm trying to use up and I use that to map photos. So I'm down to one piece. I did good. And then this was a hip kit club kit from March of 2021 that I bought extra bits of. I bought extra paper. I bought the embellishment pack. So it's a pretty big full kit. So went ahead and brought that, used it a lot. And then I brought my October stash kit, which is almost finished. It's still not quite finished. I think I have like three pieces of paper, three, two pieces of 12 by 12 paper left to use. And I will finish that up this week. Now I will show you the layouts that I created in just a moment, but I did also include a small uh, citrus twist kit from October that I had hoped to use for some traveler's notebook stuff, but I just didn't get to it. So even though I didn't even pack that much, I still had too much stuff. I'm okay with that. I would rather have options. So now you can see I've had four kits, one, two, three, four kits. I only used two of them, honestly and I created 10 layouts, but that's all that I packed. Let's go ahead and see what I made. Okay, so here are the 10 layouts that I made. The very last one isn't quite finished, but it's pretty much close to done. I just need to do some little embellishing. It'll be finished, just ran out of time. This first one was from the hip kit, the March 21 hip kit, and I used some scraps and my heart punches, of course, to create a diagonal design. If you're not familiar with my go-to design series, a lot of these layouts use my go-to designs and I will be referencing them. So if you're not sure what that is, go check out my playlist for go-to designs and you'll see all of these illustrated beautifully and explained. So this was using the diagonal design. I did some layered hearts here. You can see some of those gold glitter hearts that I have in the smaller containers. These ones here use those on this layout in specific. And I love these pictures of my daughter. So all of these will be going up on Instagram in the next week or so. The next one is of is again from that uh, hip kit. I think there were six from the hip kit and then the back, back four are from my October stash kit. So you'll see those pop up in the layout share again. But this one was just using a lot of fussy cut florals to create this vertical column down the back and then just tucking my photos in in the center. Really loved using a little bit of that twine and getting to use some little bitty tiny fussy cut florals on this one. Really, really enjoyed this one. Next up is a spring layout from Easter. And this was using that same hip kit, only I was focused on using all of this chipboard. So all of these embellishments are chipboard. And I stripped off the back layer to make it a bit thinner so I could layer them. And I really wanted to use it up because it was very, very themed. And so I wanted to use up as much as possible on this Easter themed layout, it just seemed to fit. So this is a grid layout. Again, another one of my go-to designs. Next up, we have another vertical layout. Now quite often because I do nine by 12 for my twins, I do a lot of vertical layouts for them. And this one is using branding strips on the outside as borders and a piece of uh, leftover scrap in between. And then these were large clusters that were attached to things like baskets and teapots. And I'm not gonna use the teapot part. <laughs> so instead I tuck it behind the title and tuck it behind the photo. And all you can see is the beautiful bloom of florals. This one's pretty detailed. So I'm gonna hold it up so you can see all the little bits and pieces that went into this one. Absolutely love this little bunny. And I was so happy to get that on a layout. There's another one up here. Two bunnies on this layout, this Easter layout. This next one used some die cut frames I had left over from a project, just tossed them into one of the kits and I used it to create an all the frames background. 
So this is great for using with scraps, snuck on some little bunnies and Easter eggs for a very, very simple, simple design, but oh, perfect for these photos. This one is a swinging layout. This one's probably my favorite, I think, from the whole of the kit. I just love the way the circle templates worked on this one. Used branding strips at the top and the bottom for borders. And then some really sweet clusters in the corner of my photos. And a giant chipboard title <laughs> with a little bit of journaling underneath. So that's Bloom. Then we have this one with the tags. So I had a couple of tags, chipboard tags, and so I used them as templates to create more tags from my scraps and just did a vertical line of tags down one side, then placed my two photos over on this side with some little floral bits, another piece of chipboard, and some journaling underneath. Again, these will all be up on Instagram and on my Facebook over the next week or so, or may already have gone up depending when this video goes up. Next up, we have this sweet one of us at the petting zoo, and it's a, our zoo has a petting zoo inside of it, which is what this is. And so I put the title across the bottom, and I did use a border around the outside of the white cardstock, as well as a sticker, sticker border up here at the top, so a little zigzag, and then lots of layers underneath of my photo. Simple embellishing, but lots of paper layers under there. Really like how that one came out. Next up, let's play chicken dad. <laughs> Notice the comma, we needed the comma. <laughs> we joked quite a bit about let's play chicken dad. Uh, what's a chicken dad? Uh, <laughs> don't forget your commas. So this one just used, again, the hip kit and no, this one was the last one and this one. So the last two, I'm no, this last one, Yes, okay, so this one was with my October stash kit. This one is from October, and this last one here is from October. So this one has fuzzy cut florals down one side, again with a vertical design. My three photos are matted on white cardstock and then on this piece of paper here. And then I did my title in multiple alphas down the side with a little bit of journaling. Very simple design, but effective. Does not take away too much from the photos. And then last but not least is my unfinished layout. And this one, <laughs> this one it's unfinished because my embellishments don't really match the photos very well. I need more red and I didn't have a lot of red in the kit, but I like the foundation. I like what we've started with. This was a cut file that a friend at the table gave to me that she had extra and uh, have some vellum layered behind my photos as well. It's a cute start and shouldn't take very long to finish up. But that's what I accomplished at this lovely three-day retreat. I got, three, I got 10 layouts done total, and I'm very, very happy with what I accomplished, what I used, and I did not feel like I overpacked. I just had exactly the number of options. The only thing I had to borrow the entire time was a piece of black cardstock, and it was just for this last layout. That was it. I think that's pretty good. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you overpack or underpack? for crops? Do you go to crops? And do you enjoy these creative weekend retreats? Because I really, really do. I love being around creative people and get such great ideas from them and great feedback. And it's always fun to sit and giggle. And man, were we laughing all weekend. It was brilliant. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. And until next time, bye.